Visit Rome today. And it comes as a surprise to uh, most visitors that many of the bridges in Rome are 2,000 years old. Among the most beautiful is the Ponte Fabrico, which is a wonderful example of Roman arch design. One of the first arched bridges in the world, the Ponte Fabrico allowed Roman soldiers to cross from the banks of the Tiber River to an island in its center 200 feet away. The Romans, being excellent engineers and innovators, discovered through accident first and then through continued experiment that the concept of the arch could be used to great advantage. The Ponte Fabricio was the first recorded attempt by the Romans to use an arch and a bridge. It continues to serve pedestrians in the 21st century. Since its completion, engineers have built tens of thousands of arch-supported bridges throughout the world. In the 18th century, materials such as iron became viable for bridge construction. The Colebrookdale Bridge in England is an example of an early wrought iron structure. Completed in 1779 after only three months of assembly, it spanned 100 feet and was the first all-iron arched bridge. This beautiful structure was born of the Industrial Revolution and allowed for a light, airy appearance that greatly excited bridge designers worldwide. In 1880, Gustav Eiffel, later of Tower fame, began construction on one of the first metal arch bridges in France. Gustav Eiffel was a bridge engineer, and he built probably the most elegant iron arch bridge ever built, which is the Garabie Viaduct in central France. You had to have a long span, and you had to have it be stable side to side. So the Garabie Viaduct solved this by having a, a beautiful crescent-shaped arch but then Eiffel flared out the base of the arch in the same way that he flared the legs of his tower 20 years later in order to reduce the loading and make it more stable under the lateral wind load. Completed in 1884, the viaduct spans over 1,850 feet and stands 400 feet above the river. It would inspire many bridge builders to lend an artistic flair to their work. The arch even finds its way into the longest bridges in the world. Suspension bridges. San Francisco's Golden Gate is a classic example. The building of the Golden Gate was a landmark in civil engineering. It was completed with fewer injuries than any previous bridge construction and would span one of the most treacherous waterways in the world. By the time it was completed, the use of an inverse arch as a suspension element was well established. A suspension bridge is exactly the opposite of an arch bridge. If we think back to the hanging chain, the loads on a suspension bridge are hanging down, suspending the roadway from a single cable, or sometimes a few cables, that are parabolic in shape, and they're pure tension. So if you wanted to turn a suspension bridge into an arch bridge, you would have to freeze those cables turn them upside down and put them under the roadway. The roadway of a suspension bridge often has an upward camber in the middle, a slight arching effect. And that's largely aesthetic, that it somehow is more comforting to the eye to see a slight rise in the roadway. In addition to the huge cables that hold the bridge up, acting in tension, many suspension bridges are still supported in part by the traditional compression arch. On the Golden Gate's south end, a large metal arch supports the roadbed as it clears historic Fort Point. Arch-supported bridges come in many forms and varieties. Some, such as the Bixby Bridge on California's Pacific Coast Highway, use just one long, shallow arch. This stunning span, completed in 1932, is 714 feet long and stands over 240 feet above the crashing waves near Big Sur. The roadbed is connected to the arch with numerous spandrel columns, or vertical braces. Bixby Creek Bridge was built in the 1930s, and initially, when the bridge was put out to bid, 
uh, the contractor had the option of constructing a steel arch as opposed to concrete arches. The thought being that the steel arches would be much easier to construct because they could be constructed from the roadway. They wouldn't be impacted by the waves or the creek down below. Um, however, the contractor decided that it would be less expensive to construct the bridge using the concrete arch structure. One advantage of concrete in such a bridge is its incredible strength. An arch structure is primarily a compression element. The vertical load path of the bridge will go from the T-beam deck into each of the columns and then from the columns into the arch. The arch will then take that load and distribute it to the two towers on either side of the bridge. That's the beauty of an arch. Other spans have arches above the roadway, such as the Desmond Bridge in Long Beach, California. But this bridge is rapidly deteriorating and will soon be replaced with a design pioneered by the Natchez Trace Bridge in Tennessee. This bridge is the first precast concrete segmental arch bridge in the United States with 582 foot span. The bridge is unique because traditional arch structures carry the load of the deck through a series of vertical members, which are called spandrels, that are then connected to the arch. In this case, the vision was to open up the arch and eliminate the spandrels. That way, the load of the deck is all carried at the crown of the arch. The arch is in fact independent from the superstructure. The superstructure sits on bearings on top of the arch and it's the load that is transmitted from the, the superstructure, the top deck, into the crown of the arch which transmits that load. The Natchez Trace Bridge represents the state of the art in arched bridge construction. And since its completion in 1994, it has become an emblem of modern bridge design. In the past, arches have served us in buildings, dams, tunnels, and bridges. And they will continue to serve us in our ever-expanding future. The longest concrete and masonry arch-supported bridge in the world is the Rockville Bridge in Pennsylvania, completed in 1902. It has 48 arches in its 3,800-foot span and was built primarily by immigrant Italian stonemasons and Irish laborers. The arch will return on Modern Marvels. Not all arches are structural. The graceful form of the arch and the dome has captivated onlookers and users for thousands of years. I think the arch is a consistent form that always recurs, regardless of material and culture. You can see it in almost every architecture in some form or another. It's very interesting to see its transformation in contemporary times into new materials and forms. We're surrounded by arches that are primarily ornamental in function. Some are mere add-ons to contemporary architecture, while others are integral parts of an overall design. But perhaps no single contemporary structure makes a stronger statement than the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri.